Hey there, Earthlings. Thanks for tuning in to the Barardo Podcast. I'm your host, Tony Barardo, where we talk about health, happiness, and anything else that's important to us humans. If you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the podcast by visiting thebarardo.com or just click the little subscribe button wherever you listen to the podcast. And be sure to check out my Instagram at thebarardo for all the latest videos and content. Thanks so much and enjoy the episode. It's just, just funny. It's, it's just funny. You know, the way you tell the story and everything. Funny how... Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? Hey, uh, thanks for tuning in to another ep episode of the Barardo Podcast. Of course, I'm your host, Tony Barardo, and today is a fun one. I get to hang out with a good old friend. I've known him for quite some time. He's been on the show a couple times, but I'm excited to have him on again because he's got a couple new movies coming out. I want to talk to him about that. He also lives in California, so let's talk about that and the pandemic and kind of how that's uh, you know, affecting the industry. I'm super curious. But I uh, can't wait to talk to him again. Uh, everyone, please help me welcome Chris Levine. Holy mackerel. Whoa, that's full screen. That is full screen. Are you looking at yourself like on a on a big laptop? Uh, my monitor. So this is like 27 inches of Chris in your face. I do not recommend that at all. <sighs> well, what's up, bud? Hey, buddy. It's good to fucking see your face, speaking of which. Yeah, it's been a while. <clears throat> oh my goodness, has it ever? What, what podcast are you on now? 2,472? 76, actually. Two th- you went backwards. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Just added a few more. Yeah. No, I think I'm on, uh, uh, fuck me, what am I at? Like one, 130, no, not that many. I think like 120, maybe. Oh, okay. So you're right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last time you were on was uh, a century. Century, man. It was, it was a wild day of talking. It was wild. Yeah, we're not going to go that long. I'm thinking this could be like five minutes and then we'll call it a day. Yeah, I mean, it was great seeing you, and uh, I got shit to do. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, dude, but uh, thanks for thanks for coming back on, man. It's always good to, yeah. to check in with you. And I see everything I see everything you're doing, dude. So I wanted to to pick your brain because you you've been fucking busy, no? Yeah, I've been. I, you know, obviously the persona of being busy is easier to show than being as busy as I'd like to be. But um, but yeah, I mean, in the standard of acting and filmmaking. Uh, 2020, 2021 has been been pretty good to me. That's exciting. Yeah, that's super exciting. Yeah. Uh, I saw the trailer for Handler. I know we <laughs> we uh, we put that up last time, but uh, there's been a lot of stuff coming out. So when uh, is that currently out? When, what's the what's the ETA on on this? No, so <clears throat> we shared the teaser, the little fight between Tyrone and I, which got and then then you spoke with Tyrone, which was a great show, and. Um, so the trailer just dropped, and uh, and the trailer's really good. I was really blown away because we don't have a massive budget to spend these, like, A24-style trailers, you know? They, they spent, like, 100 k on that thing. Um, so, But I was really surprised and uh, excited to share the trailer. And um, so the movie is in talks with distribution uh, this week, and uh, usually it's, like, a three-month turnaround. So let's say we sign something this week. Three months from today, it'll be released probably. So by the end of the year. Well, nice. And yeah. I mean, obviously with everything going on, it's kind of a blessing, I would imagine. You know, because you've, I mean, you've had a couple of movies that, that come out that we've talked about before that, you know, are all great. And, you know, each movie obviously is, is completely different. So I'm sure like as an actor, it's letting you kind of spread your wings a little bit. But the fact that it's able to come out on streaming and you're already kind of used to that platform is that something that excites you a little bit, or are you still kind of like, well, it'd be cool if we were in movie theaters, but I mean, do you really see, where do you see that industry going? Um, I think the, the movie theater thing is going to end up with, um, I think kind of in the way that old movies were, it was like a, you know, it was a big event and it stayed in the theater for a long time. And these were like really expensive, epic Ben-Hur, you know, Lawrence of Arabia style films. I think that's the, the most costly, uh, cost effective method to uh, theater screenings. Not yet, but I, I think in the future. Um, I think you'll always have indie theaters that will like play, you know, smaller movies and this and that. But I think the, the end game for theaters, I think, is, is a, 
a long-term six-month run of like a massive film so that everybody ends up seeing it um but yeah and as far as my films you know i don't think we our budgets are high enough to uh make a theater uh, presence worth it right <clears throat> You have to you have to spend money to get the theaters to play it. You have to spend money on marketing, uh, and those costs alone are probably the cost of the film the films that I'm kind of in right now. Um, so it's easier to, you know, maybe do a premiere, um, and, you know, just something for fun for photos and stuff and press, and then and then you know go to the the tried and true streaming method where people pay a few bucks to rent it, and we can spend, you know. A, a nice percentage on marketing to get people to watch it. Yeah. And I think, I mean, that's the key, right? Is getting, getting the content out there. That's the yeah. big thing. So it, it's kind of cool that there is easier ways to do it, but I agree with you because <clears throat> there, there's been a couple films uh, since the pandemic, obviously since we've quote unquote been open. Um, and I know you're in California, so that, that's a different convo. We'll, we'll talk about that, but uh, yeah. you know, but in Florida, ever since it's been open, it, there is a, it's a different thing when you go to the movie theater, it really is. And, you know, even, and by the way, let's go back to the teaser of, of Hamler. Cause we put that on show 100 of mine and thank you for connecting me with, uh, with Tyrone. Cause yeah, that was good to, to talk with him. And I knew nothing about Tyrone, but it, it's funny. Like when you first were like, eh, maybe it's just you two talk. And then I realized like after talking to him, that motherfucker's a geek, dude. Like he is hardcore, yeah. his channel. Cause I never, you know, saw his channel <clears throat> prior to our, our talk, but um, thanks for introducing me to him. Cause you know, I'm like a fan now of, uh, of his geeky shit. Yeah, no, he, he's at that level where like, I'd be just staring, watching you guys talk about half that stuff. So I was like, you know, why don't you guys, you know, DC it out and like really work on it together. But he's such a great dude. You know, he like, like we talked about, he's in the handler and he put up a trailer on his channel and ended up with like, 40,000 views within like a week or two. So that's always cool. Yeah. Which was cool. And yeah, that does yeah. look exciting, man. I did enjoy seeing that the full trailer when it came out and it looked, it looked legit. Like I was like, wait, this is going to be in like AMC and Regal. Like this is a big deal. <laughs> I mean, it's funny. Cause like uh, me being the filmmaker that I am, like I noticed like parts in it where I'm like, Oh, like, Oh, you know what I mean? But I'm a perfectionist at, at not only my craft, but going forward in my career on uh, on what's representing me. You know, I'm I'm going to be the worst critic on projects that I'm in, projects that I produce. You know, that I act in. So, but yeah, I think overall the trailer's fun. Yeah, yeah, and we and yeah. I mean, I think any profession we do, we always judge ourselves. So, but acting is always a funny thing, and and we've talked about this before. Where now I'm 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 happy that I'm a voice actor only on the podcast. Quite the voice actor. Thanks. But, you know, I always like wanted to kind of like get in that in that world. But it is such a challenging industry for so many reasons. But I think the big thing is not only are you judging yourself and maybe tell me if this is accurate, but I could just imagine you're judging yourself on a daily basis with everything you do, whether you're starring, producing, acting, uh, you know, writing, whatever. You're judging yourself in that industry and then you have to sell the idea to other people. With them, A, probably not knowing you, B, not knowing anything about what it is, you have to make it sound interesting. And more often than not, there's going to be rejection. So the fact that you're getting told no constantly is like the worst sales job ever. Because, it, there, I mean, there's no, you work at a car dealership, you're going to sell more cars than you are going to pitch ideas. It's got to be like so, it's got to make your brain so foggy at some point. So when you do finally come out with this, yeah, you're kind of judging, but you're also, there's got to be a relief, right? Like there's got to be a feeling of accomplishment and like, how, how is that whole process for yeah. you? Yeah. I mean, the, you know, I've been doing this for almost 10 years now and wow, it's I still out. feel like, and I still feel like I haven't even scratched the surface of like what it really truly means to be like a real filmmaker, producer, you know, a, a leading man actor or just an actor in general. Um, yes. Like, Am I at that level where it's like I I don't celebrate the small wins as much as I used to because I want big wins now uh, for sure. So, uh, but there is a sense of relief when you uh, when a good trailer comes out, you know, and you're like, okay, this represents the film well, it, it, you know. And, and but it's always scary when it's like because I'm a producer and writer too, right? So, I, if I don't have control, you know, being the control freak when it comes to film that I am. And I'm leaving it into someone else's hands. Like it's it's always a nerve wracking moment when I watch it for the first time or the trailer gets dropped without me seeing it first. I'm just like, 
<laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. That's wild, dude. Yeah, it's it's crazy, man. Ten years. I can't believe it's been. Uh... Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah, because we've known each other for. I know we say this every time, and I always try to do the math. But yeah, I think it's thirteen years, fourteen years. Because you were in well, you were in Florida oh, for. Yeah, oh seven is when I did one of my first bodybuilding shows. And that was so, then, so it might have been before that. So. Yeah. So maybe since oh five. God damn, we're old. The, I mean, the good news is. You've been yeah. doing this for ten years, um, yeah. and you look you look a lot younger than you are, which is a huge benefit in acting. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I mean, I'm seventy two years old, so I look great. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, considering there's hardly any wrinkles, you still yeah, have some I mean, of your hair. Facelift is like I'm like this a lot of the time, but uh, I look great. <laughs> the brows look fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I be so bold to ask if you do your own eyebrows? I I don't do anything with these brows. Like maybe I'll like I'll shave the center section. It's full on razor, like not giving a shit, you know. But like that's electric or raw dog. Like raw raw dog. <laughs> There's only two options. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The raw dog option is what I go at. Right, right there, center center line, brother. That is madness. Well done, sir. I mean, I have Thanks, my man. I have my barber do it, but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, every time. I go to actually get my hair done and like get dolled up by my barber to like a little treat. So now I know what women are going through. But then every time my wife is like, Brenda, she, she says hi, by the way, she's downstairs. Um, oh, hi. Uh, he says hi. She doesn't care. How are you? And, how, how is she? How is she? How are you? She can host it. Would you like me to bring her over? I mean, you know, if she wants to say hi, at least say it in person, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, she probably didn't even say hi. You're just like, uh, Brenda, I'm on the phone with Chris. Uh, great. You're like, oh, I'll tell him hi for you. <laughs> well, the only reason she said hi was because I was like, all right, babe, um, I know I just got that editing in my last podcast, which was yeah. three hours, and now I'm going to go do another one. And she's like, who's this with? And I go, Chris. She's like, oh, Levine? <sighs> all right, tell him I said hi. <laughs> she's like, what? another fucking podcast taken away from my husband. All right, great. But anyway, yeah, so she always makes me either you know do my eyebrows with my barber or she always tries to do it herself. You like do tweezer stuff or like, what do you do? She wants to, I, I choose yeah. not to. Yeah. Cause it's very painful. Yeah. She definitely does it yeah. on purpose. Like I know yeah. she's good at it cause I've seen her do her own and right. she doesn't scream. But when she does mine, yeah. I scream like a little bitch cause it's so painful. Yeah. So oh, it's horrible. Like, yeah. So my yeah. barber does the shaving cream and then the, okay. you know, um, Sweeney oh. Todd razor. Like, tss, tss. yeah. Yeah. Oh, she really taped up those eyebrows. You're <laughs> right. Yeah, you can't tell now, but it's a, it's a mess under there. I got to go see this guy. But and by the way, your lighting looks fantastic. People watching on YouTube are going to be very impressed. Yeah, there's plenty of natural light in this this amazing downtown LA apartment that I have. Yeah, because I mean it's three o'clock there, six o'clock here. I got I got nothing. Yeah, it is. Right. Well, you're always in the bad cave now. I don't know what. I guess after episode 100, you're like, now the darkness overwhelms me. <laughs> you were threatened by the dark. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, normally it's, you know, when it's, when it's just me, I got like, I got this, right? Like, you know, things are happening when I'm with a guest, you can't see my whole setup. So yeah, it looks like I'm in the bad cave. I mean, get a goddamn ring light already. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I, I could, I, I tell you what, let me crank this. How's that? Boom. Oh, okay. You feeling the key light? Now I see that chair, bro. That's a dope chair you got. Oh, thanks, bud. I think we talked about that chair, but it was like it was like three, four hundred dollars, and I was like, Ooh. yeah. And the wife got it for me, so obviously, yeah. well, I mean, it's our same bank account. I hate that now. Yeah. You have joint bank accounts as soon as you got married. Well, not soon as, but like we got our mm -hmm. own, and then we have each we have our own separate accounts as well. But we mm -hmm. both have access to all of them, so there's no shysty activity going on. Yeah. And, you know, of course, I manage all the money. So if there's a target run, I know about it. You'll know right about that $300 grocery shopping. Groceries. Nuts. Speaking of uh, love life, how's everything over there in uh, L.A. for you? You settling down? Oh, you know me, man. You know, I don't like to kiss and tell, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, a lot of nothing going on. <laughs> So you, you're yeah, slanging and not nothing. slanging and not banging, huh? Yeah, you know I think COVID made me paranoid for sure. Like I haven't been on any dating apps at all. Um, and then now that I'm like vaccinated and stuff, I'm still like 
still just busy where I'm like, you know, uh, women need, need your time. And I don't think it's fair to uh, start something with someone that I don't, I, I just can't, I can't really give you the time, you know, that they want. Yeah. And that's, dude, I mean, that's the easiest way to get COVID is through a dating app. No, I mean, that's like the worst. I would think so. Like, and I was, I was talking to random girls like during the last year or whatever. And like, none of them stopped dating. Like I was just like, yeah. So they're, you. they're having some fun for sure. They're having some fun. Um, yeah. I mean, you know, let's not, let's not, you know, say, I, you know, I, I, I get it when I need it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like there's no, there's no drought. I mean, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I get laid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want you guys to think I've been celibate for a year and a half. Um, but, well, let's uh, put it this way. You get, yeah, I mean, you get, you get laid more than a married man. That's for sure. That is for sure. That's, that's for, for sure. sure. Well, when I saw you, it, that was a hysterical conversation about how it's just like, you want to do this? You want to do this? Yes. And then it's like two minutes later, you're like, all right, that was great. Back to whatever we we're going to do. That's right. That's how it works. That's, exactly. that's married life. That is kind of the fun thing about marriage though. You know, there's no, you don't have to plan. You don't have to say that yeah. you enjoy the notebook yeah. to get laid. You know what I mean? There's, there's yeah. definitely levels to it. But then, you know, also too, it's like, it's one of those weird things where because it's so easily accessible. You want it less. Yeah. And almost like, like you don't want to, it's almost like you ever have dessert in your freezer, like ice cream or you have Oreos in the pantry. You don't eat it mm -hmm. as much, but have you ever had a dessert at a restaurant? Like you mm -hmm. eat it, like you've never had it before. It's like this forbidden yeah. like thing that, Ooh, it comes on a plate and it's, you know, it's like special. Like that's kind of how it mm -hmm. is where, you have this shit in your freezer. You're not going to eat it every day. Yeah. That's what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was, a, that was a terrible analogy. I was going to I was going to compare it to to dieting and meal prepping, right? So when you, you have no to one up me all. with your fucking meal prep, you healthy prick. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you eat no sugar at all, right? And then all of a sudden that Friday night cheat meal comes around. And like you're tasting things that you haven't tasted and like a normal human that eats like a normal human doesn't doesn't enjoy it as much. That's a way better analogy. I'm going to cut out what I said and I'm going to start over. So, Chris, you know what it's like? It's like what? when you meal prep. What is it like? Oh. Yeah. It's like a cheat meal. Like when you're when you're dating someone it becomes a cheat meal when you're married or you're in a long-term relationship, it's part of your daily diet. I will say this though. I do make an effort though. Like when <clears> we go out and we have like a date night, that's like my effort. You know, like that's when it's special. It's not, you know, when we first were married and and I think any relationship you always like every night it's, you know, it's forbidden. It's new. You're trying to, but now it's kind of like, you know, every night we get, you know, we get done working or whatever. I just, you know, want to watch Netflix. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I just yeah. want to chill. Yeah. I just want to relax with my wife and hang out. Yeah. And there's no pressure, which is good. But I think when yeah. you're dating, naturally there's already pressure. So you almost like, even though you want to fuck all the time when you're dating somebody, you almost feel the pressure to because you want to impress them and satisfy them. And there's like, you know, there's like this thing where you almost feel obligated to do, even if you don't want to do it. Yeah. And you got to perform. You have to, you have to, because they're going to talk yeah. shit about you behind your back. Yeah. So you gotta, you gotta yeah. come strong. But like, you know, when you're married, it's like, she's heard me fart. I mean, there's just, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. After that, I mean, it's like, Hey, I, I don't need to, I don't need to shoot fucking, perfect free throws every time. But I will say though, obviously mm -hmm. being married now, there is a thing where you know, if I got to make it happen and I can't, you know, I'll, I'll make it happen. Like you're my wife. I'm going to take care of you. So mm -hmm. yeah, to your point, it is kind of like a cheat meal because when it happens, it's a little bit more satisfying. Like you worked all week and yeah, yeah. so it's, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Your jawline is really, really tight right now, son. So, uh, yeah, it makes a lot of it makes a lot of sense in what you're saying. Working those muscles. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, dolphin yeah. season. Check that out. You see my boy too. I was just gonna say that, bro. It's sick. Yeah, that's my. Uh, these are my boys in Patch Vibes. Shout out Patch Vibes. Oh yeah, yeah. Shout out Patch Vibes. Yeah, they're. Is that, uh, is that what's his name? Tua. Yeah, Tua. Uh, they're starting yeah. the season up. Yeah, it's social media is kind of cool now because you can watch like if you follow football teams, you can watch their TikToks and Instagram reels and they'll post little things here and there. You know, yeah. back in the day, we used to have like invest into like ESPN and yeah. to sit and watch 
these fucking 30, 45 minute training sessions when now you could just go through Instagram and see a couple clips here and there and it's cool. And they're looking good. I yeah. mean, they're looking, I mean, they're playing against each other. So it's like, eh. yeah, they're probably taking it easy on each other. Yeah, but it should be interesting. We'll see. I'm definitely going to make it hopefully to a couple games if things open up. But I did notice last year, obviously the pandemic was funky, but not only did I not make it into the games, but I didn't watch a lot of football though. Oh yeah. And I, this was the first year in a long time in 2020 and 2021 where I didn't have uh, a fantasy football team. And I kind of enjoyed mm. not having one. Yeah. And not watching football. Like it sounds weird. Hmm, that is weird. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was nice. Uh, I had a lot of hobbies, picked up a lot of stuff, obviously doing the backyard and, you know, I got the houses and stuff. So I, I was busy, but I don't know. It was just, I found myself, especially since I got married these last couple of years, I always get angry you know, being a Dolphins fan, because more often than not, Sundays suck after like 1 p.m., yeah. right? If they yeah. lose. So I found myself like being pissed off after a couple of days and oh, worried yeah. about my draft on fantasy football, and, and it was just affecting my mental status. Yeah, I've been trying to do that a lot, is just only consume stuff that is keeping me positive, and football was not keeping me positive. Going to the game is exciting, but like yeah. watching for 16 weeks, 10 teams and stressing out and then I got my friends talking shit and I'm talking shit to them I'm gonna come up with these one liners and I'm ignoring my wife and it's like it's just not healthy downhill no it's tough being a dolphin fan yeah it does <laughs> so I've just resorted to gambling that's what I've gone back to <laughs> it's just as enjoyable speaking of like streaming and social media what uh you got anything going on that you're watching any new movies or streaming not really like I just watched the Val Kilmer documentary Ooh, I've been trying to get Brennan Watt. I really want to watch this. Is it good? It's really sad, to be honest with you. Because, you know, he had that throat cancer. Now he doesn't speak. Like, well, he speaks through, like, a hole in his throat. And it's just you see, like, someone from Top Gun or Doc Holliday from Tombstone, which was, like, my favorite Val Kilmer performance. And then you see him now, and he's kind of like this, like, older, artistic, still trying to be cool and funny, but, like, speaking through the hole kind of just, Oh, so there's a lot of him now. There's a lot of him now. Yeah, it's it's. A, luckily, he doesn't narrate it. His son does, but there are moments towards the end too where it's just present and he's talking to you through this thing the whole time, and you have to turn on subtitles, you know, because you can hardly hear him. It's just sad seeing someone that's like, you know, he was like the youngest person to get to Juilliard School of Arts, right? And then he like, you know, was one thing after the other, just killing it, and then it like. After Batman, when he decided not to do the second one, uh, people labeled him as difficult as an artist. And then he, it looked like he was just making just crap after that. Well, I mean, you know, it's, uh, it didn't set up. Once you're labeled as the guy that has the, the nipples on the bat suit, I mean, your, your career's don't help, yeah. unfortunately. That's it. They wanted him to do the sequel, but he refused it. Well, for, eh, for good reason. It definitely wasn't, it wasn't, the, it wasn't the best. But they should have just... No. They should have kept Tim Burton. There's some crazy shit that uh, has been coming out lately that I was reading, and who knows if it's true or not, but like yeah. Tim Burton's plan, you know, because he was going to audition tapes leaked of like Nick Cage. For Superman? So yeah. like the third one was going to involve uh, Catwoman introduce another villain. I forget who it was. And then they were going to kind of tease Nicolas Cage as Superman, and then there was going to be a fourth one, all with Michael Keaton. But, you know, Tim Burton in the studio didn't want to move forward. So, like, all those articles, it's like, oh, what if? You know what I mean? Like, because the yeah. series could have been, you know, Batman Forever and then Batman and Robin could have been good if it wasn't so campy and neon lights. It could have been interesting, you know, if it was Michael Keaton. Yeah, but, um, yeah I definitely want to watch Val. And speaking of Michael Keaton, you know about The Flash that's coming out. He's back, baby. Oh, very it was exciting. Great too. Oh, my God. Very exciting. He looks incredible. Very exciting. He does. He's in this new series that I don't know if it comes <laughs> out yet. It just came out. It's about, uh, it's called Dope Sick. It's on Hulu. Okay. Um, and it's all about the um, Oxycontin company. Mm -hmm. And Michael Keaton is one of the doctors. I think it comes out, I want to say it comes out in a couple months on Hulu. I don't know if it's a series or a movie, but it looks really, really good. And he's just a great yeah. actor, man. So to see him come back in this role, you know he's going to fucking crush it because he was a good actor back in the 80s. And, yeah. and all the way up into all of his films now, but to see him kind of like in this role again is almost like the third chance that we really wanted to see. 
uh, in a different light, but it'll be interesting. I've been, I've been following it pretty intently and, uh, it gets me a little hot for sure. Yeah. You look a little sweaty in there. A little bit. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, I mean, even just talking about it, you see the, you see it glistening. <laughs> hey, do you watch Suicide Squad? I think you put up, did you put up a review? I wasn't sure. Yeah. And I don't mm-hmm. know if you, I don't know if you know, but I've been, uh, I've been doing a lot of those, uh, the last, like, I don't know, a few months or something. I think it's a good idea. Thanks, man. And what I realized was, you know, obviously I love doing the podcast and I still do it every week, but it's been so hard, especially during the pandemic. I used to have people to the studio. And then of course these virtual things have been nice, but you know, there's something about it and it's always great, but there's so many things that I want to talk about that I can't find people except like a, you know, a Tyrone or a couple of my friends that are geeks or, you know, whatever. But there's so many things that are coming out and I want to do a podcast on them, but I just feel the the thousand people that listen to me, whatever the number is now, I don't think they'll get value out of it. So I was like, mm-hmm. maybe I should do something like little clips here and there. So that's kind of what I've been doing. And I get more views out of that than I do the podcast, which is strange, but I didn't realize how many people wanted it. I just kind of wanted to do it just to kind of release this thing that I like to do as an outlet. And yeah, people yeah. are enjoying it. Like Suicide Squad's a good one because I think it was so hyped up. And I, I've been doing this thing now. It was Jungle Cruise. I think it was Jungle Cruise. I started this three rating system. So I don't do <clears> stars. <throat> I do just ratings. And because that's how I view movies now. I don't know if you're the same way, but like when I'm talking to a buddy and I'm like, yo, how is it? And he's like, well, it's this. Th-. Stop. Like, just cut cut it short. Like what? Okay. Am I going to go to the movie theater? Should I watch it in the theater? Like that's how yeah. I view So that's my first rating is, is it theater right. worthy? And then my second rating is, should I stream it at home? Is it worthy of streaming at home? Yeah. Like, and then should I pay for it? Or is it worth like just watching for free on Netflix and waiting? Uh, yeah. Or is it not worthy at watching at all? Like, should I not even give it the time of day? <laughs> so that's my three rating system. And then I start with that. And then I, I give my rating. And then I like to do uh, reviews of other people. So I'll grab like a five-star review on Google of what they th- other people think of the movie because they're hilarious. That's funny. Like yeah. I read one of the Jungle Cruise and she goes, <laughs> the title was uh, OMFG. And then <laughs> OMFG. And she's like, finally, all caps, finally we get to see the perfect romantic dynamic of two incredible actors. And I go, oh my God, this is going to be so great. So I keep reading it. It's paragraphs long because she's like, Emily Blunt and Dwayne Johnson's uh, um, sexual dynamic is intensifying every moment. Like it was this incredible five star review, and I was like, "That movie sucked. Like it wasn't that good at all. Like it was okay. The movie's terrible. Is yeah, it wasn't good. It was like a bad Pirates of the Caribbean. Like it really was. They were like, "Hey, Emily Blunt, be as British as possible with this terrible dialogue that we give you." Yes. And they're like, "Hey, Dwayne Johnson." Be the rock, but like times 10 and then be campy and corny and cheesy at the same time. Can you do that for us? That's right. And then spoiler alert at the end, you're really dead. What? Hold on. They just oh, threw that us at us. It was just, it was like, oh, so it's really like Pirates of the Caribbean three. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tough one. Yeah. So I do that. I read, I give them my rating and then I read five star reviews off Google and then I read, okay. a, and then I read a one star review off Google immediately afterwards. Oh yeah, you got it. Astounding. It's very yeah. it's very exciting. Because that's how ridiculous five star and one star reviews are. Like unless it's food or like a restaurant, I'm not a big star guy. Cause there's just so no. many variables, you know, that, that could happen. Like you can go to a restaurant yeah. and you can have bad service one day and you give that restaurant a one star rating. Like that's not fair. Uh but yeah, Jungle Cruise is garbage. Suicide Squad I did do. I don't know. I enjoyed it because I'm a comic book fan, but again, I, yeah. I rated it as it's worth streaming at home for free. Okay. I'm going to see it at a theater tonight, actually. Are you? Well, I, get, I have the Regal Pass, so I pay 23 bucks a month. I see unlimited movies. That's worth it. Then. Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't yeah. pay $12 a ticket, 24 for me and the wife. I wouldn't pay for that. Right. No. Um, but, you know, it's definitely better than the first one. Okay. But there's just a lot of stuff you're going to be disappointed in, I think. Yeah, probably. It, that's how. <laughs> it's DC. What do you expect? Yeah. Now DC animation though, that shit never lets me down. Hey now. <clears throat> that's where it's at. Never lets me down. You got yeah. a fave? Probably Justice League War. Ooh, yeah. Good call. I think that's on I'm, HBO I'm, Max right now. I the, yeah, it is on HBO Max. My favorite part of that is not only did they give Ray Fisher 
the credit he deserves. And they show like how, how he mutated into that robot version, like really extreme where like his stomach turning. But then they give Wonder Woman what I think the truest Wonder Woman that she is, right? And it's this warrior. She comes to Earth and, or like, you know, America or whatever. And the only thing she wants to do is just fuck things up, right? Like that's all she's been taught. Compared to like Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman, which is like, peace, man, just women are cool and like men suck. And, you know, I guess I'll fight men when I have to. Right. Like to me, it's, it's that's so such a feminist version of, of what Wonder Woman is. Like in this day Wonder and age, is strange. Uh, weird, right? Yeah, I know. And, and I, I get feminism like for sure. But, you know, if you think about the actual character, she's trained on an island. That's all they do is learn how to fight. Imagine fighting your entire life, eight hours a day. That's the only thing you do is fight. How would you be as a normal human? You would just want to fight everything. And you, so it's not like I, you can, like it. it's, it's in your, yeah, it's cause that's a great example. A story like that is unlike, you know, Superman can get away with that because he was on earth and, you know, he's in America the whole time. He was raised in Kansas yeah. and he's a good old boy and his dad yeah. raised him to be a good human. So when he became Superman, of course, right. he's not going to go around beating the shit out of people. He wants to be careful. But yeah, Wonder right. Woman was stuck on an island that was invisible yeah. and all she did was yeah. kill and fight. Like it's it. They should have brought more of a 300 mentality yeah. to it, I think would be really sick. Because that's yeah. what Wonder Woman deserves. Dare I even say it should have been a rated R? Ooh, could you imagine a rated R Wonder Woman? It'd be fantastic. Um, yeah, it'd be pretty cool. And, you know, the first one was decent, but you saw 1984, right? <sighs> I have not met one person that thinks that's a great film. Even the feminists hate that one. Yeah, I don't think you can. No, I mean, that was... I even heard they're going to... Now, I, I did read that on the docket for DC, they're coming out with... Wonder Woman 3, so hopefully they can resuscitate what they've done, um, depending on what they do with the Flash and the Snyderverse and all that. But yeah. they're coming out with a, a movie called The Amazons. I don't know if that's going to oh, okay. be a, a prequel and it's not going to have uh, Gal in it, but that could be mm -hmm. interesting because that's a good opportunity where that could be like 300, where it's Easily. like, yeah, Amazons fighting off, you know, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years ago, you know, maybe they bring back yeah. dark side for that, you know, that flashback in justice league and yeah. maybe they focus on that fight, but that could be interesting. There's so many good characters. And I think they're starting to do it with these uh, DC yeah. flicks. It's a different world than Marvel. Like Marvel is campy. Marvel is fun. <laughs> Marvel is very Sp Spider-Man universe. Yeah. Like even the animated films and all that, but DC is just known to be darker. So embrace it yeah. and quit fucking around. Like that's why the Joker worked, right? Cause it was, true to its content that's right yeah you know um, and did you hear what uh they're doing with that guy uh with no they're they're going forward with it yeah so apparently Joaquin and Todd Phillips are on board with it they're negotiating money of course that's going to be a big payday but I yeah. think they're gonna do it to where he's not the real joker is the plot of the movie so mm. you know he kind of started this like movement and then it ends up being either a prequel and they're going to end it where he passes the torch, so to speak, to like the real Joker. And maybe we see that Joker in one of the new Batman films, a new Joker that we're not even going to know. And it's going to be Jim Carrey is apparently rumored to, to potentially talk through that. So maybe no. he'll be, yeah. So maybe he'll be like the older Joker that kind of takes on the torch and, and goes <clears> through the universe. So uh, I don't know. I think like a William Defoe would be a great Joker if we go with yeah. an older one. Or yeah. something like that. But yeah, if, if you do like a bunch of movies like that and it's dark, like a Mr. Freeze one and... Yeah, you just got to keep it dark and true to the material, you know? You can't do what what they did with uh, Batman with Val Kilmer and Jim Carrey, like with his question mark onesie. You know? <laughs> that was just fucking awful. Terrible. Good God. But uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> they're nothing like Marvel movies, that's for sure. Yeah. I have been... movies. Yeah, they're great movies. I'm, I'm going to talk about... My Alaskan movie I just shot because I know if the director watches this, he's gonna be like, "You didn't talk about the fucking movie, man." No. Like, yeah. Yeah. No. Um, I I, I want to know what what do you got going on. So I met this guy, Scott Eggleston, uh, in November when I was filming another Alaskan film because I have two Alaskan movies in post production up until the one I just shot. Right. So I met him there and we were talking uh, anabolic life, this and that, and what I've been doing. And he has a master's in film, but. You know, he just made short films. He has like a really popular YouTube channel, um, like I think like a million subs or something like that. 
Uh, it's called The Frugal Filmmaker. I go, listen, man, you know, if you want to write a movie for me, I don't do short films anymore, so make sure it's a feature. And then a couple months ago, he goes, guess what? I wrote your movie for you. And, you know, we'll fly you to Alaska. It's going to be like a the one location kind of Amityville horror mixed with some sci-fi. You know, help us with the casting and uh, let's do this. Wow. And that's what we just, yeah, it's called Bad Bones. So hashtag Bad Bones movie. Ooh, hashtag Bad Bones movie. I'll, uh, I'll mm-hmm. leave that in the description of this. Yeah, shout out Scott. Yeah. No, it, I, I saw you post some stuff. It looked pretty, it looked pretty wicked. I love the, uh, the Amityville horror type of, of scene. All, all those type of movies. I know you're a big horror junkie too. Like all those type of movies, there's so many things you could do with it. And uh, that, that'd be interesting. Can you tell us anything else about the plot or is it kind of hush hush for now? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably on the husher side, but like, you know, it's the idea that like my wife is sick. So I buy this house knowing that there's some paranormal things happening here that could save her life. And it's, it's, a, it's a game of like love blinding me to do things that I probably scientifically should not be doing uh, with the wifey, you know? And then obviously I lose control of the situation and, and things get a little a little spooky, a little scary. Um, but but you lived. Look at you. You're here now on the podcast. Whew, thank goodness. I'm here now. Barely. I got so sick, dude. I've never been sick on set. And I got horrible sinus infection. I gave it to the girl I was working with. Yeah, you so did. Both sick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah, no, I uh, got us both sick, so, you know, hopefully it doesn't affect the film too much. Maybe it adds some something to it, um, but I felt so bad. Did the sickness, did any of the symptoms, like, you know, because, I mean, imagine, like, you know, when they were filming uh, Poultry Ice, like, right. if they had a sickness that made them projectile vomit, huge positive for the film. Yeah. Did that? Did yeah, this happen that to you? Work. Were, your, were your, uh, your sickness, was it the same symptoms as, as what you needed to be in the film? Not really, like... What sucks is that we shot so out of order that it was like, there was days where like, maybe I was, I lost my voice, but it was like supposed to be the end of the film when I wasn't supposed to be sick. So. Oh, I see. I get you. That's the downfall of it. It wasn't like uh, the vid. No, it wasn't vid yet. Like luckily, you know, like it could have been. Have you gotten it yet? Have I gotten Um, COVID? Yeah. No, no, I, I got vaccinated, but I haven't got it. Like I've been... I was sick, like, right right before it was, like, officially a thing. Um, I lost my voice for a few days. Um, but, you know, didn't never lost my taste or smell. So I know people are like, well, I had it in 18, you know. Like, you know. <laughs> did you or did you, did you just have the flu? <laughs> you just had a cold. Yeah, I don't know. Um, no, I haven't. Did you get COVID? I did not. Well, I don't yeah. want to say I didn't. I mean, I did get the flu at some point, and then I tested yeah. uh, for it. And it was when I was building the backyard. And I think a lot of it just had to do with uh, I wasn't eating and I fasted like the yeah. day before. And, um, you know, because even when I have a Crohn's attack, sometimes I'll, I won't have a Crohn's attack. I won't feel it, but I'll get flu-like symptoms because my body's oh, trying right. to reject whatever's going on in my intestines. So uh, I don't really take it too seriously, but obviously the first time I got it uh, was, I think, December of last year uh, or January or something like that. And I was like, oh, fuck, I think this is the vid. So then I, I did a rapid test at CVS, came back negative. Wife did it, came back negative. So, um, But that's when they were also saying there there was false positives too. So um, mm. who knows? I might have got it, I might not. But we were we were so careful and I wasn't doing shit. I think I was good. I'm vaxxed up too because of work I have to uh, get yeah. vaxxed up. Well, I don't want to say have to, but they, uh, rec- they recommend I get vaccinated and I chose to get vaccinated. Yeah, I think it's a good choice, dude. Like I know people that I'm close with that, that aren't getting vaccinated, they refuse. And I'm just like, what do you, do you really think that if you got vaccinated, like you're going to get some crazy cancer in 25 years? Like to me, it's one of those things that vaccinations are the greatest scientific uh, discovery of our time, you know? And so ask anybody uh, that had smallpox, how they doing? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's wicked, man. In fact, I mean, the, the podcast I was doing before this was just a solo one that I'm going to post probably before this one, uh, but I just finished editing that. And that was just me kind of, you know, venting a little bit because I had a conversation with a buddy uh, on this podcast before, but I didn't post it because it was, uh, we got a little heated with it. And I was like, oh, yeah. And I was like, I was like, dude, listen, uh, I get what you're saying. You don't want to do it, but now you're on my podcast and you're like 
you're saying people shouldn't do it for a certain thing. And there's, that's okay. You can have an opinion, but because you have an influence, you have to be careful of where you're getting your information. And, you know, he's hardcore Republican, Fox News, all that stuff. And, you know, I voted Republican a couple of times, but I also voted Democrat since I was 18. So I've, I've gone back and forth. And it's just so funny how politics have just fueled uh, this thing. And did politicians take advantage of, of COVID? Maybe, sure. I mean, we'll never know. Mm -hmm. Who the fuck knows? Who cares? The point is, these people listen to a certain news organization, no matter what side you're on. And that's where you're getting information. But these news companies, man, A, they don't know you. B, they're getting ready to go out of business, bro. Like, they're just trying to stay afloat. What's that little magazine um, that's like that spreads all the stupid celebrity rumors? Like the National Enquirer or whatever? Right, like the Enquirer. Yeah. Do you believe that? Because if you do, you might be one of the guys right. that watch Fox News. I mean, it's just yeah. it's so yeah. it's it's so crazy how much <clears throat> we get the information. And even still, to that point about working out, because you know this, uh, I had a buddy that uh, is an influencer that's a, a full-time trainer on, Jacoby Baker, shout out Jacoby. Great dude, huge following on Instagram, and, you know, his whole life is training, you know, kind of like yours was, but except you had a place of work to go to. This guy works for himself, and he works at home, and he has people come, and, you know, he has people that are clients that have been with him years that pay him hundreds of dollars a week, and these people are coming back in there and saying, hey, listen, Jacoby, bro, I saw something on TikTok, and it's not what you said, and he's like, how could you, like, what are you doing? You're comparing yeah. me to a clown that you don't even know? Like, I've been working with you for you know, X amount of years, you're losing weight, you're healthy. You're like, what are we doing here? And that's okay. where it gets funky, right? Is not just with the pandemic, but just in general, people are just getting all this information, so much info, you know, we don't know who to believe in. And it is kind of scary, but you have to have some common sense <clears throat> to know that these people on the other side of the TV slash your phone, they just want views, man. They just want to, they just want you to like it. They want the double tap, bro. Like you can't, yeah got to do your own research we become prosumers right like even more so than we used to be uh we are all so uh informed whether it's correctly or, or incorrectly just informed in general on products on you know weight loss on health on politics on everything now uh you know it's, and it's only going to get more we're only going to become more informed in our own in our own bubble um and yeah personal trainers will have to deal with a lot of that shit doctors probably deal with that on even more so. Yeah. Like I saw the TikTok doctor and he was, he said to do this. And this doctor that's been practicing for 30 years. Right. Is like, Yeah. I mean, you know, like even, uh, <clears throat> and you say informed and not informed, it reminds me of, I'm probably butchering this. So, so sorry if he listens to this podcast, uh, but it's from Denzel Washington. Sorry, Denzel. But he had a quote and he said, sorry, Denzel. <laughs> sorry bro. But he said something on the red carpet. Someone asked him about something going on in his personal life. This is years ago. He got asked about his personal life. And, you know, they go, Denzel, is this true? And he goes, where'd you get that from? And they go, you know, news station, whatever. And he goes, as consumers, if we're, if we have too much information, we're misinformed. If we don't have any information, we're not informed. And that's kind of like a real thing, right? Because if, if like you don't watch the news at all, you kind of make your own personal assessment what's good for you because every person is different. But if you watch everything and you consume all of this content, whether it's the news or TikTok or Instagram or influencers, whatever, and you're consuming all this stuff, you're misinformed because you're getting dragged in so many different directions. You don't know what the fuck is up and down. Yeah. So sure. it's almost better to not consume any of it and just kind of make yeah. your own educated decisions based off what you and professionals around you, you know, do. Yeah, it's tough, right? Like I, I usually tell people, you know, uh, try to absorb as much information as possible. Like do that. Right. But, uh, still make your own. Know. Yeah. Don't be a douchebag after all that. Though. Or better yet, consume everything, but just don't yeah. tell anybody about it. Like don't Yeah. <laughs> just hold it all yeah. in like a real human. Okay. Yeah, that is uh, that is a little crazy, man. But you know, hopefully this uh, new this new variant isn't uh, you know hopefully it doesn't get as bad because I know there's a lot of cases that people are still getting it even if you're vaxxed. We we're also talking about this too, uh, me and Jacoby, where we're like people don't talk about this enough. Where whether it's the Delta variant or COVID or any other flu-like symptom, people don't talk about just being healthier, like at all. Yeah, you know, isn't that because again, if it's not the Delta variant, it's going to be 
the Frontier variant or the Southwest Airlines variant. Like something's going to happen right, right. where there's going to be something that comes out soon that's going to be worse yeah. than this. And I would say, and I'm not a doctor, but I would guess more often than not, if you're healthy and you take care of your body and you take your vitamins and do the right things, you, most likely you can combat a lot of different viruses and diseases. Would be my guess. For me, I, that's what's funny though, right? Like, cause you know, you know me, I've always worked out. I eat really healthy. Um, you know, my body fat's always at a very low percentage. Um, You're extremely trim, genetics. very sexy. Yep. But yeah. Like, yeah, you get it. You know what I mean? But you know, something like that cold I got in Alaska that still knocked me on my ass for, you know, I still have like a cough that's, that's still around um, as a healthy individual. So I think no matter, but maybe if I wasn't healthy, that's also a tough thing too, coming from a healthy individual, I'm, I still got sick, right? Like it wasn't COVID or anything like that, but it was like enough to whoop my ass. And uh, what, what is it then, right? Like, so am I not healthy enough? Uh, you know, um, uh, you know if, I wasn't, if I wasn't healthy at all, would that have been way, could I have died? Like, it's tough, yeah. dude. I don't know. I know. Yeah, I think so. I think it's, I think it's all those things could be a lot. Of, I mean, look yeah. at me, bro. Like, where the immune system lives. I mean, I, I'm, I'm relatively healthy. You know me for a long time and I have yeah. this fucking thing that is an immune deficiency. Yeah. So I have to be like super careful with everything I do. And I'm, you know, healthy. I mean, even if I <laughs> was to be obese and fat, I'm still going to have this disease and I'm still going to be as in risk as anything else. But, you know, but I, again, on my last podcast, I also said this, I go, I'm not going to ever get bitten by a shark because I don't get in the water. <laughs> so I've, I've already almost made my percentile of getting bit by a shark almost zero. Yeah. So it's like I I might get COVID, but if I can not be obese and be slightly healthier um, to maybe not die from it, you know, yeah. I, I should do it. And I just don't think people yeah. take that part of it seriously. It's Again, going back to the vaccine, there's a bigger chance of the vaccine working for you than it being a microchip that Bill Gates can track you on. Like the chances are going to decrease if you get the vaccine. So it's, that's the perfect example, right? The, that what you just said there, I think is, is the perfect way to explain it. There's a better chance of it actually helping you than this cancerous microchip being implanted in you. And this poor Fauci, bro. Like I don't like anything about him at all. <laughs> But, you know, I have buddies in the in the uh, medical industry and, you know, he's he's written books that still to the day they teach medical students. You can hate him or like him, but the dude's been in the industry a lot longer than I have. And you. Yeah. So yeah. he might know a little bit more than us. Everything that he says, he's just a he's a person, man. He's making mistakes. Yeah, it's, it's something completely new. Yeah. Like give the give the dude a break. Give the whole CDC a break. Like the, these folks. They don't know what the fuck's going on. Does mass work? They said yes, and then they said no, and then they said put it back on. And they, because they don't know. Like, they're learning new information all the time. People are like, oh, well, with the mask on, you could smell a fart, so... Is it really working? <laughs> I have seen those. Which, again, valid point, yeah. Yeah. but, I mean, my farts are fucking deadly. I mean, to five masks, you could still smell them. I mean, <laughs> but I think it's the idea to at least catch some moisture if you're coughing, right? That's really what it is. That's what it is. Yeah, the, yeah. the wetness. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like when it rains outside, do you wear a raincoat? Yeah. You, you might still, still get wet. Get a little wet. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I wear it, though. I don't yeah. know. The yeah. examples are endless. It's just so interesting how people don't come to uh, this decision on their own. You know, it's... And again, like, going back to Fauci. Fauci, I don't think, has a an underlining... Um, agenda, you know, maybe the CDC has an agenda, but I don't think if there's, let's say there's 5,000 people that work at the CDC, I don't think 4,000 of them want to take over the world and lie to us. Like, I think no. a lot of them want to help us yeah. and that's with anything, you know, but yeah. you, you just gotta, you gotta trust it. You gotta give in and, and trust everything's going to be okay with it. But everyone's so skeptical now. I don't know what, what yeah. came about that. I mean, you could blame it on Trump, I guess, but we've always been semi-skeptical, I think, as humans. We always want to do our own thing. And I don't know. Like, what, what do you think it is? Like, from the friends you talked to that you mentioned, I mean, is it is it because of a certain thing or is it just because 
they don't get the flu shot and they've always been like this? I mean, there are the anti-vaxxers like what? I think it's just, again, being misinformed or informed by someone that they trust. We trust information, right? So only from certain sources. So whatever sources you trust is going to guide you into who you are and what decisions you make. Uh, and that's like the different circles that each one of them have. Like they, one of them have a, has a, do a family doctor that said, now nah, don't worry about doing this, you know, literally. And so of course a family doctor, who else is not going to trust me? They're going to trust the family doctor, right? So I think those are the situations. It's all about your circle and the information that you're given, which helps create the, the opinion that you have of the person that you are. I guess what I do is I kind of surround myself with people that are like-minded, but you know, I, I always try to listen to professionals as much as I can, but I don't know, man, hopefully this will be uh this will be cool. I mean, we were planning on going out West again and I was going to hit you up because we were going to do my whole Vegas trip with work and then go back to Cali again for a week. But that got canceled. That was supposed to be in a couple right. weeks. Yeah. It's just not over yet. You know, we, we had a, we had a brisk moment of, of freedom and then I don't know. I mean, things are open, right. But like, I don't, I'm not going to Vegas anytime soon. I don't want to be involved in that, that kind of craziness right now. No. Yeah. Like even I hosted a, a couple events a few weeks ago and I mean, I still masked up, you know, when I was around a lot of people and yeah. I didn't feel comfortable. And they're outdoor events. events. And they're outdoor events. Yeah. Cause you know, yeah. If, again, I'm not going to get bit by a shark. So if I'm in the water, you know, I'm, I'm going to surround myself with the cage quote unquote to protect me from right. these fucking, right. these fucking blood suckers. He yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, have you seen? Because obviously, for you, I mean, this hasn't slowed down your career, which is exciting. It's almost like you've you've ramped things up even more, which is uh, yeah. which is kind of motivating, no? Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not. It's reduced my uh, like the projects that pay really well. For the, sure, like the ability to to audition know, like, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, you never pay me for these things. I'm still waiting for check for 100, right? But um uh but yeah, like the my pay scale has gone down, uh but my work has gone up. Um so that's the yin and the yang of 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 being an actor and a filmmaker. But yeah, I think things are picking back up. I know commercials are are firing on all cylinders right now. Um like I get like a commercial audition at least once a week right now for like big like Honda and shit like that. So COVID's not stopping them at all. Not at all. Um, yeah. Those are, those are good. Yeah. Those little ones like little commercials and things like that. I could see that definitely cranking out for sure. Yeah. Anything you got coming up soon or just popping out some auditions? <clears throat> yeah. Nothing, nothing commercial wise. Um, usually when I do commercials, they end, I, you never know where they, they end up. Who gives and a shit as long know. as you get a paycheck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's still yeah, it's still a good paycheck. Um, but yeah, other than uh, then then obviously the handler hopefully being released this year, um, and then the Bad Bones movie early next year. Um, I'm in a few things, you know. You got A Waste of Dawn that's out now, um, which is a fun fun little horror movie that uh, I have like a, and there's another movie called uh, Love and Love Not, it's a little rom com indie rom com that I'm in as well. And so you know you got things coming out and. Hopefully that all leads to bigger and, and better things. That's the goal, man. That's the no, goal. That's, that's exciting, dude. And how that's is cool. uh how are things out in Cali in general though, aside from work? I think it's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, weather's always great and um, you know, uh people are genuinely wearing masks indoors, you know, and in the gyms and stuff like that. Um, but at this point you can't it's not worth fighting or arguing over it. You don't want to wear masks, it's whatever. Don't wear a mask then, you know. It's, it's not worth the stress anymore. But yeah, I mean, other than that, life is good, man. Life, I'm, I'm, I'm surviving. Good, man. Cool. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. It's, been, uh, it's been about the same in, uh, in Florida, except, you know, we're fully open and we're apparently put on these massive events that have 70,000 people a day. So even though we're, we're potentially the root cause of all these cases in Florida and Texas, but, you know, whatever. Hey, whatever. At least we're free. We're free. Yeah, it's freedom at this point. point. Yeah, exactly. All I got to say is, Bop, 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 bop. That's right. And for those that don't know, that means brick oven pizza. That's exactly what it means. Yeah, dude, I uh, I was going to fire the little bitch up today, but it was supposed to rain. It was a 40% chance of rain, which normally is like 100% typically. 
Yeah, it's every day. Yeah. But um, yeah, we didn't fire it up, so probably this week sometime. But we've been cranking that bitch out. Look at that little bicep thing you got going on. Jeez, bro, calm down with that thing. For people that are just watching this on YouTube, I apologize for the uh, the sexual yeah. content that you Seriously. just saw. Yes, uh, I have I have worked out before. Yeah, yeah. You've seen the gym. <laughs> yeah, dude. Hey, yeah, have you seen the garage gym? It's getting there. Dude, it looks great. Thanks, Fed. Yeah, I wrote yeah. the, uh, I got the chalk paint up there so I could write, you know, the workout sesh. Yeah. I mean, life is good for you, bro. What, you're, you're like a marketing dude for Monster. So it's got to be a cool company to work for. You got the Tesla now. You got the podcast. You got the at-home gym. You got the trophy wife. I mean, what what else are you looking for? What's next, bro? It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty good. Pretty, 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 pretty yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's been good, man. I mean, especially just, it is weird once you have the interaction with people like we have been, and then we get back to this where you kind of have to swallow it and say, we might have to go back to lockdowns again. You know, yeah. like it's happening. So yeah. it's, it, it's encouraging that I got the ducks in the row and stuff here, but you know, it's also a little disappointing too. Like the wife is dealing with some shit with, you know, her dad and the VA cause he's, he's uh, in a nursing home. So uh, we can't see him. We haven't been able to see him in like a year. Oh uh, yeah. So that 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 part kind of blows, but I don't know, man. It's just a new world. I think we have to like evolve and accept it. You know, it's it's. I feel like we're in the era of someone's trying to sell us on the idea of stop using horses to travel and to start using these car things. And you know, there's some of us that are like, no, we gotta use the horses. Fuck these cars. Yeah. Yeah. But then there's people driving around in cars. Like we want to get rid of the, get rid of the horses. Did you? Yeah. Did you time that perfectly with the fucking car horn in the background? Isn't that weird? <laughs> that was fantastic. That's so funny, dude. That's the guy out there that doesn't want us to like keep riding horses. You fucking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's what it feels like, man. It feels like you know we're we're like evolving into this like virtual, non-interacting species, and we just have to like, you know, <laughs> bend over and take it. Yeah, our virtual circles will grow. Our actual in-person circles will continue to shrink for sure. Yeah, and maybe that's maybe that's what it is. And you know, not wrong with that. Yeah. We just have to embrace it and yeah. be like, you know, just be lucky we can even do this. Technology is at a point where we can still do this. Yeah, it's great. Like, I mean, yeah. if we never see each other again because of this pandemic, it's going to be unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I'm I'm happy we can at least do this. Yeah, of course. It's a good plan B. You know, it's it's definitely not yeah. ideal, but. Uh, yeah, we're, we're very fortunate we do this. And then, you know, plan C, worst case, we just go to Mars with Elon and the boys. That's next. That's always next. But all right, dude, I, I didn't realize we're like at an hour already. Oh, my God, I'm sweating. It's like it's been the longest hour of my life, bro. Fuck off. These just keep getting better and better, okay? And better. I mean, your, yeah. qual your quality is on par with a Marvel movie. Mine is still with a Zack Snyder film. But I think overall <laughs> we're we're creating some uh, some incredible, very very sexy and bright content. So um, yep. you're getting there. I think the first one we we did it was like you in like a, a folding chair. I don't know if you were at home or if you're like in an alley somewhere. Do you remember this? And you like had like a, a background because you were trying to cover up the hole in the wall or something. <laughs> like it was. Do you remember this? I was actually homeless at the time, and I was outdoors with my phone. It was like an iPhone 3. Right. I was just like this, shaking so bad, like, can you see me, Tony? <laughs> but that's when, like, the 9 came out, like, you were seven phones yeah. behind. Yeah, um, exactly. No, but I'm glad things are going good for you, man. I definitely oh, want God. to make this, uh, you know, a constant thing because it's good to hear from me and catch up with you. And, uh, yes, sir. Hopefully, the next time we do this, we won't be talking about the pandemic. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's plan on, uh, maybe when, when something gets released, we'll do a little chat about it or something like that. Or like, I don't know, a, like a live screening. Ooh. I can share, if I share a screen, what does that do? How does it look? Oh, it's fantastic. But yeah, that could be rad, a live, a live <laughs> screening. What do you think will come out first? The handler? Well, I mean, we could do a live screening for anything. We could do an anabolic life free screening and, and, and watch it together. If you want to do that for like as a fitness thing, um, yeah, or we can do No Way Out, a little free Alaska film for everyone to see it. Um, and if I'm being honest, I have not seen No Way Out. It's on my uh, watch list, though. Yeah, so we can do that if you want to set some up on like maybe like a Friday night or something like that. Um, have a little Friday night screening. Ooh, that'd be sexy. 
Yeah, how's I'm fine about that. How's your setup? You got a nice little uh you got a nice little Mac, you got a nice screen, you could stream it. Yeah, that'd be fun. Right. Yeah. Just let me know if you want to do something like that. If not, you know, we'll just chat when something comes out and go from there. Yeah, dude. Because no way out is out uh right now. And you can get that on uh I know Amazon anywhere else. They were working on some like shutter or something like that, but I think Prime is still the best way. Yeah, I love me some Prime. And if you don't have yeah. Prime at this point, I don't know what you're doing with your life, people. Yeah, there's random people where I'm like, hey, just get it on Prime. It'll be, it'll be here tomorrow. They're like, oh, we don't have Prime. So where do you where do you get where do you get everything? <laughs> yeah, what do you what do you what do you do with your life? I, what is how do you get like toilet paper and stuff? Do you go to the <laughs> store and buy it? They go to the store, dude. That's it's weird. so weird. Um, so yeah, Amazon Prime, no way out. And then you got Anabolic Life, saw that great flick, super cool if you're into fitness or any type yeah. of anabolic steroid use knowledge. Yeah. Just, it's just overall really uh, interesting and exciting story. Uh, that's available on Prime. And then uh, you got two movies. Mention those again for the folks and where they can uh, find those out. Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, for my, my leading role films, you know, The Handler, obviously, uh, it's going to premiere, I guess, at this uh, action film festival supposedly this weekend in Austin. So if you have any Austin viewers, uh, it's called the Action TV Film Festival. And then, but I think for the general public, it'll be on, uh, closer to the end of the year. And then Bad Bones, which is what I just finished in Alaska shooting, uh, that'll be out early next year. So we got a little bit of time for both of them. Excellent, dude. No, man, yeah, can't, dude. can't wait. Again, super excited to talk to you as always, bro. And uh, yeah. I'll shoot you a message after this. We'll uh, we'll shoot this shit a little bit, but definitely be safe out there, bro. Yeah, dude, you too. All right, my brother. All right, bro. Later, dude. Peace.